What is up everyone? My name is Bria and this is Iman Wellness. This page is dedicated to providing you tips and tools to help you reach your nutrition, health, and wellness goals. And so really what I want to do with this page is just empower you and let you know that you have the capability to heal yourself and that we are our own best healers. Everything you need is already within you and if not, within reach. So today we are going to be talking about what to do when you are in a funk. Energetically, just feeling not your best, not 100%. Literally for the past probably three weeks almost, I have just been feeling low energetically, tired. Usually I'm very creative and I like to go out and I was just wanting to stay in the house. My creativity was just, <laughs> and I just, I didn't feel my best. I did not feel energetically like in the mood for anything really. I didn't want to go to work, but I had to go to work. You know, I didn't want to go out. I just wanted to like chill and rest. And honestly, I think it's okay to feel like that. It's a normal experience. And I think that whatever your body or your mind is saying that it needs, you have to honor that and you have to give it. And so during this almost past month, I've just been doing a lot of resting, regrouping. I just finished school. So now I'm officially um, an integrated nutritionist. I'm super excited about that. And I think I was just due for a break. You know, I'm always going, 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 going. And um, I had to like step back and really like see what I needed because sometimes I put myself on the back burner and my needs and my wants on the back burner. And this was a time that I felt like, you know what, <laughs> it's okay to put yourself first and, you know, handle or do whatever you need to do to get back to where you want to be. And so that's what I did. And so I want to share these tips and tricks with you and let you know some things that I did that I felt really helped me to get back energetically to a place of um, confidence, a place of security, a place of fulfillment, and just feeling better about the day to day. And so it's not like a one stop shop. It's not like you're going to do this one time and, you know, wipe your hands of it. And I never have to do this again. I feel like healing is um, kind of like the scales of life. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, you know, you might tip this way, you need to do something to bring it back up. You might tip that way, you need to do something to bring it back up. It's an ongoing dance that you have to do with yourself. And it's a part of self-love, taking care of yourself, listening, being in tune and knowing when it's time to rest, when it's time to go, you know, and just trusting your intuition and your body will tell you what it needs. So that's what I had to do. So let's go ahead and get into it with number one. Okay. Number one. For sure, prayer and meditation, it's like a must for me. It's a must. Um, a long time I did not meditate and I still struggle to meditate, but it's something, it's an ongoing practice that I'm working on improving. Um, but together, the prayer with the meditation is super, super powerful. There's a verse in the Bible that's talking about renewing your mind daily. It's so important because our mind really rules a lot of our actions. And if you don't have a sound mind, it's going to uh, increase your chances of doing things that are not going to be supportive to you. Like, um, you know, whatever that may be for you. For me, it might be uh, going to smoke or going to get drunk or um, just doing things that are destructive to my body, like eating really terrible, not taking care of myself and um, staying up all night, not getting the rest that I need, you know, just this ongoing cycle of a pattern of destruction that I'm, I'm building up. And, you know, I can't act surprised when I break down, when I'm doing these things on a consistent basis that are not supporting me. And so when I pray, when I meditate, I can call on a higher power God and, um, get that renewal that we need, a strength that I don't have within me. You know, I have to call on God because I don't have it within me to just fix everything. And I don't think any of us do. And, you know, I think that's the purpose of having a relationship with God is that he wants us to call on him and rely on him so that we can um, 
use his strength and not rely on our own strength, you know? And so that is super important to me. Prayer and meditation, I, I've recommended to anyone. And even scripture as well. Even if you're not um, religious, the word is so powerful. Um, it's a living word. It will speak to you. You know, you, you pray and then boom, somebody might come up to you and, and say something to you, or you might open the Bible and there might be scripture right there, you know? It can come from any aspect, but also just reading the word and renewing your mind that way and just, um, you know, repeating what you need. And oh my gosh, this, this guy is like <laughs> right outside my window. He's just looking at me. This is so awkward. But anyway, it's, we're going to keep going. So um, what we're talking about, scripture, reading the word, even if it's not the word, you say, I'm not religious. I don't want to go there. Okay. Listening to a podcast that is empowering talking to a trusted person who is going to encourage you and pour into you or um, an elder who's been there and gone through it already and can give you some reliable information, talking to a therapist, anything around that aspect is going to be super helpful to kind of get you out of the rut, foundationally, spiritually. You know, it starts with your spirit and then your mind. Um, that's what I believe. And so I, I try to always, when I'm feeling out of it i hate that i always wait till i'm like feeling out of it not always not always but a lot of times i will wait until i'm feeling like negatively and um that's when i want to tap into god and i'm trying to work on just doing it more um religiously on a daily basis the start of my day that's how i like to start my days now in the morning i'll pray do some yoga meditation or something and then i will um move on to something else so that's how i like to start my day but yes number one prayer meditation or talking to someone um who can give you some guidance number two would be sound therapy sound therapy can be anything related to music and for me sound therapy can include a lot of different things i have some instruments here that i'll show you let me grab them Okay, so the first one I have here is a tuning fork. And I think people like singers and people who play um, instruments, they use this a lot to, to stay in tune. But this is also very helpful um, to kind of help you meditate or just relax or just like a positive sound to kind of like, you know, rewire your mind for a second. A lot of people get like freaked out by stuff like this. They think it's like witchcraft or that it's, like calling on a negative energy and i don't believe that to be true you know it's an instrument just as if you were listening to someone play the piano or the saxophone you know it's an instrument it's it's made of wood and metal you know just like a lot of the instruments that you listen to on a regular basis and so it's a good one because you don't have to be trained really to use it you can just use it and i'll play it for you here so you just hold the stick hold the fork and then maybe just like Take a deep breath, a calming sound just to help you relax. And it doesn't have to be this. You can use something else like um, some gospel music or um, some meditation music. They have a lot of those on YouTube or even um, just like some music that uplifts you. Music is very therapeutic and I would recommend it. Another instrument that I like to use is the um, singing bowl. This is also something that has kind of like a negative connotation and it's, it's an instrument, y'all, you know? So I say go to what resonates towards you. If you don't feel drawn to this, you don't have to use this, but any type of music that's gonna be uplifting and speak to you and encourage you, play that and that can be very helpful. So for this one, I'll play this for you as well. You can either hit it on the side. Oh, that wasn't a good one. <laughs> you can hit it on the side super like commanding. I love that. It's just like, okay, we're letting go of all of the stress and I'm just focusing on this moment right now. So you can hit it on the side or let's see if I can play it. You can go around like in a circle. I think the circle is what makes people like <laughs> a little turned off by it or a little scared of it, but there's really nothing to fear. It's just an instrument. Uh, I'm not that good at playing it but that's what it sounds like, okay? So those are some instruments. 
that I like to use or a lot of times I'm I love music I'll go to like a live concert and just be around that energy and people or I will um, put on some music that I like a lot of times gospel music I like to start my day and just sing and like you know try to release some of that energy um, I think it's very very powerful for me and I think it might be very powerful for other people as well um, okay number three number three is exercise when i'm feeling in a rut <laughs> i have to exercise now sometimes you're not going to be in the mood for that and that's okay you know you don't have to like go run a marathon i say the the rule is 48 hours like you have two days to sit and do nothing and then after that we got to get up we got to be moving you know this is we're not staying in this energy anymore okay and so exercise can be as simple as doing a morning stretch it can be as simple as doing some yoga or going for a walk outside whatever type of exercise that you can get to do that because there is this rule in science i know i don't know if you were taught but we were taught um you know newton's first law i believe it is <laughs> that energy can never be created nor destroyed and what that means is it can only be transferred. We don't have the power as human beings to create energy or destroy it. We can only transfer it to something else. And so with that being true, if you're having this energy of anxiety or depression or uh, I'm not talking about clinical depression. That's a whole nother thing. I'm talking about, you know, you're feeling depressed today or saddened or low energetically, whatever it may be, whatever low energy you're feeling. We don't have the power to destroy it and we don't have the power to create a new energy, but we do have the power to transfer that negative energy to something else and, you know, accept the positive energy. Don't lose me. I hope I'm not losing y'all, <laughs> but it's just something that is like one of the laws of nature. And so you have to find a way to move that energy around, whether it be through um, music whether it be through prayer, meditation, or number three, being exercise. I think exercise is super helpful because it's literally, you know, you're moving the body. It's moving the energy. You're putting it into something else and it's super effective. Um, also, number four, we'll just quickly transition in hydration. Making sure you're staying hydrated, drinking plenty of fluids, plenty of water. If the body is dry, you know, it's harder to support the cells. You're going to feel fatigued. You're going to feel less energetic. You need to be drinking plenty of water, plenty of fluids. Tea, herbal teas are great. Um, especially, I really like holy basil. It's an adaptogenic herb. Helps to relax the body. It's good for stress relief. And um, at the same time, you're getting your hydration because it's water-based, but it's, an, you know, an herbal tea. So that's number four getting plenty of fluids. And number five, my last one, is eating in ways that are gonna support you and help to uplift your energy levels. So eating a lot of processed foods, a lot of trans fats, a lot of saturated fats, um, fried foods, excuse me, a lot of dairy, anything that's gonna be inflammatory to the body, like those things that I just named, it's going to slow everything down and it's not going to support your cells. So trying to eat a diet that is full of fresh fruits and vegetables, that is full of fiber, um, you know, all of your micro and macronutrients, which is like your vitamins and minerals, getting healthy fats. There are certain vitamins that are only um, fat soluble, which means they need a fat in order to be properly uh, metabolized in the body. And so it's vitamin A, D, E, and K. So if you don't have enough fat in your diet, healthy fat, um, then you won't be able to properly metabolize those vitamins. And we need those vitamins for so many things and in, in processes in the body. And so, um, you know, a healthy fat can be like omega-3s, which you find in like um, fish, like salmon, fatty fish, herring, things like that. Um, you can also get it from seeds, chia seeds, uh, hemp seeds, black seeds, things like that. And then um, avocados, another great healthy fat. So trying to incorporate those into your diet 
plenty of protein and it doesn't have to be um, protein from meat. It can be plant protein just as a fact of um, and giving you, you know, the energy that you need. You just have to make sure that if you're doing a plant protein that you get the complete protein and you incorporate um, plant proteins from different plants. That way you can get all of those um, essential proteins that you need. Amino acids, I mean, essential amino acids that you need. And so, yeah, those are my top five things that I would do if you're feeling in a rut to try and get you out of it. There's plenty more that you can do, but I think those five right there at the core are going to be very effective and you should feel, um, you know, results within a week, within a day, you might even. It depends on, you know, your lifestyle and how you were living before that. But if you do those things, that you will definitely feel energetically a shift. And so, again, the first one is, prayer meditation or talking to someone who can be trusted and uplift you. Number two is um, sound therapy, using music or tools to help you meditate and focus and release negative energy. Number three, exercise, making sure you're staying active. I would say at least 30 minutes a day, try and move, get outside, spend time in nature, do some stretching, whatever it may be, whatever you have the capacity to do that day. Go and do that. Number four, staying hydrated, drinking plenty of water. And number five, um, oh my gosh, <laughs> eating foods that are supportive to your body. So let me know if you do them in the comments. I would love to hear what you like to do when you're in a rut and how helpful it is for you to get out of it. All right, y'all. That's all I got for you today. See you later. Bye.